Good morning, students. So, standard eight. Once again, I'm before you, and today I'm going to start chapter four of history, which is about French Revolution. In this chapter, I will mention about the French Revolution, its causes, the series of events that took place during the course of the revolution, and finally, its impact. Students, I would like to start up this chapter with a statement given by the famous writer, thinker, and philosopher Jean Jacques Rousseau. Once he had given this, uh, not once he had given, actually in his famous social contract, uh, he has given this statement that man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Yes, through this statement, he wants to emphasize the suppression of the physical freedom. Through this statement, he wants to give vitality, he wants to give importance to freedom, which is the basic birthright of every individual. Yes, this chapter, French Revolution, is all about the struggle for the basic human rights. See, your French Revolution, it is a major historic event that took place in Europe, not only influenced the French people, but also uh, not only inspired, uh, influenced the people of France, but also it influenced the people living all over the world by its ideas of liberty, equality and justice. See, this French Revolution which started in 1789 and continued till 1799, it changed the entire course of the world history. This French Revolution will be always remembered not only for the struggle for national independence, but this revolution, in this revolution, people fought for the basic human rights. They wanted to establish the foundation which would promote the freedom for humans everywhere. So this chapter is very important as it not only inspired the national movement of India, but also it is still inspiring the major democracies of the world. So, behind every major event, there are certain causes. So, behind this revolution also, there are many, there were many causes. Okay. So, uh, the first cause is your political causes. First, I will discuss about the political causes behind this revolution. See, the three major points which I have covered in the political causes is your autocratic monarchy, defective administration, extravagant expenditure. Yes, it is a crux of your political causes. First of all, I would like to explain you about autocratic monarchy. See, if you will see the French society, the political scenario in France uh, before 1789, you will see that there was a feudal society and there was a concept of absolute monarchy. Okay, so what is the meaning of absolute monarchy? What is the meaning of autocratic monarchy? Autocratic means dictatorship. In, uh, it is more or less similar to dictatorship. See, during those days, not only in France, um, in most of the uh, uh, European countries, you will see that there was a concept of uh, monarchy and it was based on theory of, uh, theory of kingship. According to this theory of kingship, a king or a ruler, he claims himself to be the representative of God on the earth. So, he was very powerful and whatever he wants to impose on the people, it had to be accepted blindly without questioning. That was the expectation of the ruler from the society. Okay, so there was an absolute monarchy and the Bourbon family which was ruling France uh, since uh, decades, they were uh, Although this family were ruling from a long time, but during this uh, era, especially before 1789, the political condition was not good. Okay, neither the political, social, or economic condition was good. Okay, because uh, the ruler of the country, he was not interested in the welfare of the people. Okay, second one is your defective administration. If you will see the administration, it was run by the incompetent people and even the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, who was the wife of Louis XVI, she used to interfere in the administration process. She used to interfere in the working of the administration. And definitely, when people are not capable, 
definitely there will be a negative impact and same was seen here also in France. There was a defective administration, the king or his um, administrators or even the queen also, they all were they all were uh, working together but they were not able to give the solution to the problems of the France. Okay, whether that was an economic crisis or political crisis, they were not able to bring France out of this crisis. Next one is your extra budget expenditure. Yes, it is also one of the major cause. See, during this time, you will see that the economic condition of France was very, uh, you know, it was a very deplorable, it was having a very deplorable condition. The condition was not good. But then also the queen, who was famous for her lavish lifestyle, the king and queen, being the ruler, being the guardian of the society, they were knowing the economic condition, then also they were spending a lot of money in leading the luxurious life. When on one way the people are suffering, on one hand the people were suffering, while on the other hand the rulers who had the responsibility for the welfare of the public, they were busy in leading the lavish lifestyle without having concern for the public. Definitely these all causes were the major fa political factors behind this revolution. So I don't think so, there is any problem in the political causes, just have a look. So what were the political causes? Autocratic, monarchy, defective administration, extravagant expenditure. See the social, the second cause is your social causes. So the, we have seen earlier the political causes so the social co uh, condition in France was also as distressing as the political condition. If you will see the so society of France before 1789, you will see the society was divided into three classes. Okay, just have a look. The first, the society, the whole society was divided into three classes. The first state, which was consisted, which consists of the clergy. The clergy means the people who worked in the church okay the second one is your the king queen nobles and aristocrats means your the rulers along with the nobles and other administrative officers and aristocrats and the people who belong to aristocratic family okay next one is your third state in the third state you can say in uh, short it consists of the common people the, all the professionals like your teachers, doctors, lawyers, along with the peasants, artisans, all they come in this third state. So the third state, it was having the largest population, but this state was the major sufferer. The first state and the second state, they were uh, free from taxation. They did not have to pay any kind of taxes. And they used to live in uh, luxury, they used to have lavish lifestyle. They were enjoying all the facilities under the government and the crown and they were free from taxation system. They were enjoying the facilities but they were not uh, forced to pay taxes. While in a third state which was giving the taxes, they were devoid of all kind of facilities. So the major frustration was from this state and this frustration is natural. The people who are supposed to be are giving the taxes to the government. So in return, government is also providing a facility with the uh, government schools, colleges, roads. There are different facilities which are provided by the government to the public because we are paying taxes for them. So it is the duty of the government to work for our welfare. Okay, and first of all, see government is for the uh, people so definitely it had to it has to take care of the people but here in france the people who were giving the taxes they were exploited there was inequality and injustice in the society the peasants artisans they have to give separate taxes to the crown to the clergy and the nobles that so just assume the people like artisans or peasants who were earning a very low income, if they are giving three kinds of taxes, what would be left to them? 
how would they feed their family apart from this the uh, professionals like your doctors teachers or your lawyers who were the wealthy part of the society who were wealthy people but they were also uh, having frustration that they were giving the taxes and they were not getting the facilities and the people who were not giving any kind of tax they are enjoying all kinds of facilities so this kind of frustration was natural because of the inequality and injustice which was prevailing in the french society and thus it became one of the major reason behind the french revolution now let's come to the economic causes of french revolution see the economic condition in france was also in a critical stage before 1789 if you will see the finance of france it was in a very a uh, critical condition the um, financial condition of the france was uh, so critical that it was already uh, immersed submerged in the huge debt the reason behind this critical financial conditions are continuous wars extravagant expenditure ba bad harvest and inflation see France was indulged in war since a long time since the era of Louis XIV France was indulged in war and even your Louis XIII and XVI they also not try to stop the wars and during their time also even during your 1778 uh, France supported American war of independence and after a uh, due to this all continuous wars it has imposed a great uh, it sorry for the interruption so uh, this uh, continuous wars because of the continuous wars it imposed a great burden on france and not only it uh, imposed the burden but it also created a great frustration in the society because people were already suffering because of heavy taxation because the finance to improve the finances to uh, bring the france out of uh, critical financial condition the administration as well as the king they had gone for the several measures and in one of these measures it was heavy taxation so already people were suffering and again with the imposition of heavy taxation there was a frustration secondly the extravagant expenditure by the king and queen and the administration was also one of the reason behind the bad financial financial condition of the france see when a country is already having low economic condition the ruler should take the steps which would help to improve the financial condition but here in france louis 16th and the queen mary they were leading lavish and luxurious lifestyle as well as the nobles were also enjoying they did not th uh, they did not have any uh, they were not aware about the public problems neither they were taking any steps for the welfare of the public to bring the measures which would improve the financial uh, financial condition of the people living in france see during the preceding years of your this french revolution there was war, bad harvest because of the bad harvest the peasants the farmers they were not in position to give the taxes and if in france during that time people uh, were not able to give the tax they were harassed they were exploited even they were sent to the state prison of bastille it was a symbol of oppression by the state so ultimately people when they were left with no food they don't have any choice except revolution next one is your inflation see because of extravagant expenditure continuous war heavy uh, taxation bad harvest definitely there is a inflation and this inflation had a great impact on the especially the uh, third state because the third state was providing the taxes it was devoid of all the facilities and it was going to suffer 
and because of all these suffering now the third state they want to raise their voice against this injustice and exploitation so economic causes also played a vital role in this revolution okay now let's come to the influence of philosophers so the role of writers thinkers and philosophers was also very important in this french revolution they played a vital role in creating awareness among the people these writers and thinkers through their writings criticized the government exposed their inefficiency not only exposed to the inefficiency of the monarch but also the administration the exploitation and the injustice which was existing in the society they inspired the people to fight for liberty and equality which is their basic rights so among these thinkers and writers basically i will discuss about rousseau voltaire and montesquieu these three played a leading role and giving a shape to the revolution so rousseau he was a great writer and thinker of france and napoleon once told if there would be no rousseau there would be no french revolution so you can understand the vital role played by this man so rousseau he uh, according to him the people it is a basic individual right of human beings man is born with certain basic individual rights and freedom is one of them so liberty justice equality are the basic rights of human beings nobody can snatch that and rousseau believe that the exploitation and the suppression which was existing in the france it can be uh, removed it can be uh, eradicated from the society only by the masses that's why he started creating awareness among the people through his writings he asked the people to fight for justice liberty and equality now voltaire voltaire he gave he was a great writer who actually exposed the church his great work is in the field of where uh, already i have mentioned you about the exploitation and the uh, ill practices which were carried out by the church so church was very powerful like your king and queen and they formed the first state the clergy clergy means the people who work in the church so they formed the first state in the europe in the Fra french society so these clergy they the people uh, in the church they were also exploiting the common masses they were also going for the various ill practices which were against the religion which were against the uh, masses and corruption see uh, exploitation was like people were imposed with the taxes people were asked to follow those superstitious and blind faiths they were not allowed to questions uh, land were snatched by them so ultimately these ill practices the truth of the church was brought in front of the people by voltaire through his writing people came to know about the reality which the the, the real role of the church which it was playing during that time now let's come to montesquieu see montesquieu was against the uh, autocratic monarchy he was against the theory of kingship he did not believe that the a particular person who is just a uh, who had just got the post of ruler through heredity he can be claimed in he, he can be accepted as a god so what was theory of kingship according to this theory a king used to say that he is a representative of god on the earth so that's why everyone should follow him without any questioning but montesquieu raised his voice against this theory of kingship he was against the autocratic monarchy he had given the idea of separation of powers and constitutional government so uh, the separation of power even today in our constitution also it is an important feature so separation of power means power should not be uh, given in one hand because there is a chance of misuse of power so ultimately power should be divided it should be bifurcated among the different organs so that it cannot be misused and 
it can be used for the welfare of the public now let's come to the next cause which is american war of independence yes american war of independence which was started in 1775 1775 and continued to 1789 so this american war of independence it also inspired the french people the French already in the soldiers of France, they took part in this American War of Independence. Now, I want to just go to background to explain you how this war also paved the way for French Revolution. Britain, actually this seven years of war was fought against Britain by France. France was also one of the part of this seven years of war. But it resented for the loss which it had got from Britain. So ultimately it wants to take the revenge. And that's why to, take, to strategically weaken England, it supported American War of Independence. France supported American War of Independence. And it sent its soldiers to uh, America. So the soldiers were uh, the soldiers who fought this American War of Independence. They participated in this American War of Independence. They were inspired by the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity. So they uh, now they felt that a revolt can be even uh, could be successful even against a major military power. Okay. So ultimately they got the idea they were inspired the, by the ideals of liberty equality and fraternity and they started to uh, to take they started to take the steps which would free them from the exploitation of the clergy the crown and the nobility so ultimately they were inspired by this american war of independence and they wants to bring a change in the society and this war played a vital role in making this revolution successful. Now let's come to the um, series of events that took place during the course of the revolution. So what were those series of events that took place during this uh, whole revolution process? The first one is your immediate causes. Okay. Then second one is your fall of Bastille, march to Versailles. French, uh, sorry, France became a republic, reign of terror, the directory, and Napoleon Bonaparte. All are these series of events which comes under this course of revolution. So, what was the immediate cause of the revolution? Already, as I have mentioned you, if you will see the immediate cause, it is the financial crisis. Already I have mentioned you the economic condition of France was in deplorable condition because of the continuous wars. Uh, the participation of France in the American War of Independence added fuel to the fire. The uh, economic condition became more critical. Now, in order to maintain the government offices, to run the administration, to maintain the lavish lifestyle of the king and queen, mo money, from where the money will come? So, in uh, the government, the administration, uh, sorry, the administrators along with the ruler they decided to raise the tax even uh, some of the able ministers give, had given the proposal to impose the tax uh, on the aristocratic uh, part of the society also but the aristocratic section of the society they uh, they totally uh, they neglected this fact and they were not ready to pay the taxes so ultimately the whole burden was on the third state which was giving the taxes so uh, this man louis 16 who was the ruler he was forced to call he was forced to summon the assembly of states general okay so it was actually this assembly had not taken place since two centuries because uh, of the deplorable economic condition to improve the economy of the france the ruler was forced to summon the states, uh, sorry, the assembly. And in this uh, uh, meeting, the third state, they for the first time they had given this that being the largest part of the population, now they demanded for one vote for each member of the assembly. This 
assembly it consists of 300 members who, who comes from the first state and the second state the 300 members consist of your first and second state and 600 mem members comes from the third state so if one vote to each member will be given so who will be in majority the third state so the king don't wants to go for this so he rejected it okay now because of this rejection the people of the third state they walked out of the assembly and they uh, after the weeks they start and uh, they uh, totally rejected the autocratic monarchy and they demanded they starting they sorry they started their demand for the national go uh, democratic government they started their demand for the constitutional democracy and with this the revolution began now the second one the second event is your fall of bastille so now let's come to the second event which is your fall of bastille see bastille was a state prison and as i have mentioned to you that the king tried to had a meeting with the states general that was your french assembly and with the th three states but he could not reach to a proper solution because of the rejection uh, by him against uh, the will of the third state the third state which kept the proposal that every one member every member of the national uh, every member of the uh, general assembly should be given right to vote and he was against of this because of this the uh, members of the third state they walked out of the assembly and they formed they declared themselves as a national assembly now after few weeks the people of the national assembly they started uh, gathering and they started their uh, revolutionary works against the injustice and the first step regarding this was the fall of Bastille. The people, apart from the National Assembly, thousands of people, they joined them, the common people, they joined the National Assembly and they uh, marched towards the, uh, they gathered in the streets of Paris on 14 July 1789 and they started their march towards the Bastille, which was a st state prison and they not only broke the prison, but also released the prisoners. Okay, so ultimately the fall of Bastille, it was the fall of despotic rule in France. So ultimately it, uh, it signifies that the autocracy which was existing in France, the monarchical system which was existing in France, now it was, uh, it was overthrown. Okay, because people now they dared to uh, broke the state prison, not only broke it, but also released the prisoners. So that's why on 14 July 1789, it is declared and observed as the Independence Day of France. Now, on 12th August 1789, there was declaration of the rights of man which was adopted by the national assembly what is this declaration of the rights of man according to this every man is born free and thus they are uh, equal in terms of right also nobody is privileged and nobody is backward every member who is living in the society every man who is living in the society it doesn't matter he belongs to which caste he, it doesn't matter he belongs uh, to which economic status he, he or she should be given equal rights and that is the major proclamation which has been done by the declaration of the rights of man according to this everyone is equal and thus everyone has the equal rights and nobody can take away this now let's come to the next event now next is your march to versailles so uh, in october 1789 thousands of women they started demanding for bread and with this demand they started their march towards the paris and uh, during this march the revolutionaries they tried to uh, capture the king and queen although the monarch uh, he managed to escape but he was arrested along with the queen 
so it was a second major event it was the next event of this uh, course of revolution now after the march to towards versailles now let's come to the next point that is france became a republic yes the national assembly uh, which was the actually the assembly of the third states majority and uh, it completed the task of uh, making of the constitution in 1791 and with the completion of the constitution in 1791 now there was also abolition of monarchy in 1792 France became France was declared as a republic and now it is no more having a monarchical system of governance there was no autocracy there was a rule of public and uh, the uh, when France was declared republic it majorly its concern it established this republic with the key ideals of liberty equality and fraternity now In 1793, the executive authority passed into the hands of Jacobians. See, Jacobians was a radical political group in France, and its leader was Robespierre. So, the people who were against Republic, they were treated as enemies of the Republic. Okay, so ultimately, who those people who spoke uh, who Uh, they express their resentment against the republic or against the uh, against the all the political events which were going on during to that time those people were suppressed you will see that during this uh, 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 when this leader you know, robespierre when he came to the power when jacobians got the power there was a reign of terror in france so during this era of reign of terror thousands of innocent people were killed only on the basis that they are the enemies to the republic so the revolution which was fought on the ideas of liberty equality and justice it was again crushed okay why because the people don't have the freedom of speech and expression they they cannot express themselves so ultimately if anyone who is speaking against the government against the actions of the government against the political situation he will be gulleted so during this reign of terror you will see thousands of people innocent people as well as the king and queen were also gulleted okay so in 1793 king queen and many people were gulleted so it was uh, it created a scenario of fear and it also disrupted the major ideals on the basis of which this french revolution took its foundation now after this reign of terror uh, especially after when the power was taken away from robespierre after the death of robespierre the moderates gained the power okay now these moderates they started to uh, frame the new ideals by which the foundation of republic can be become it can become more strong now after uh, the reign of terror the next event was your the directory as i told you that after the death of robespierre uh, the power was gained by the moderate leaders and especially the directory was formed which consists of five members and the power executive powers were uh, with them and this directory ruled from 1795 to 1799 although this idea of directory was not very successful because uh, again there uh, again there were uh, conflicts and tensions which were existing in the french society and this directory they were not uh, successful in solving the problem of the public as well as they were dependent on the military genius of the napoleon bonaparte so uh, because of the conflict uh, among them and because of the lack of efficiency uh, regarding the uh, administration and the political uh, system they were overthrown by napoleon bonaparte in december 1804 now napoleon bonaparte he was very popular and he had already uh, fought uh, he had already fought uh, although he joined uh, the army as a guard 
but because of his skills and military genius he rose to the uh, highest position of general and later on he even leaded the uh, france in the war against the european powers so this man he became very popular among the masses and taking the advantage of this he became the he declared himself as the emperor of france so ultimately with his declaration against the idea of republic see france had fought the war against the injustice exploitation with the key ideals of liberty equality and fraternity but with the coming of napoleon bonaparte again establishing himself as a emperor again establishing autocracy it crushed the idea of republic and again france had to see the setback in terms of its struggle against the injustice i'm sorry injustice and inequality now after this we i will discuss about the impact of french revolution so like every revolution it has also some impact which had brought the, the this revolution it has brought great changes not only in french society but it also had inspired and influenced the people living all over the world it so uh, now i will discuss about the impact of this revolution now let's come to the impact of this french revolution the first impact is it led to the establishment of republic in france yes we have seen that the monarchical system was abolished and france was declared as a republic so now the country which was earlier under the rule autocratic rule of a king now it is free from autocracy it is free from despotic rule now the people have the choice the people have the authority the common masses have the authority to rule themselves on the behalf of the leaders chosen by them okay so now now the government would not be hereditary but it would be uh, selected it would be the representatives of people would govern on the behalf of common public now the second one is the old it popularized the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity yes this french revolution it made the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity very popular not only in france but all over the world yes now the people started raising their voice for this basic ideas and it inspired the people to fall for the injustice the exploitation which was more or less existing in most of the societies during that time next one is it brought an end to the practice of serf dom so what is the meaning of this serf dom see it was actually practiced in europe and it was a part and parcel of the feudalistic system feudalism already i have mentioned you that it is a kind of uh, system where the part uh, where the land is owned by the feudal lords and uh, they give their land to the workers and in return they provide the uh, they uh, help the ruler to fight uh, they provide the manual service the laborers they provide the manual service to the landlords and the landlords they provide them the protection so this serfdom was also a part of the feudalism okay actually the serf the serf the word this serf it was used for the farmers or peasants okay so the farmers or the peasants they used to work on the land and then it was a hereditary one okay so the farmer son will again work for on the land and they are bounded to uh, the landlords they are bounded to the will of the landlords so it was a kind of exploitation of the farmers by the landlords so ultimately with this revolution the practice of serfdom also came to an end next one is you can say that even feudalism also came to an end because of the french revolution now next one is your it inspired the national movements in asia and africa very true 
even your indian national movement it was inspired by your american war of independence french revolution russian revolution so this french revolution it inspired the uh, people of Fran uh, sorry the people who were living in asia and africa and you know during that time many of the countries of asia and africa they were under the control of this imperialistic powers whether that was a britain france or poland or portugal so ultimately the people who were living in the country they were inspired this by this french revolution they got the confidence with this revolution that they can also fight for fight against the injustice and exploitation they can also win the national independence they can also struggle against the mighty power okay now last one it led to the rise of nation states yes this french revolution they encouraged they gave the concept of nationalism to the people nationalism means feeling of oneness feeling of loyalty and devotion towards one nation one's nation so the feeling of nationalism was promoted by this french revolution because of nationalism there was a rise of nation states and what is this nation states nation states were actually a political uh, you can say it is a, a country, it is a political unit which is inhabited by the people who are living and share a, some common culture language or history okay so nation state uh, the, there was a rise of nation states especially after this french revolution so ultimately just please have a look over this impact of french revolution so i think so the concept is clear to you if there is any problem please mention me in the comment and uh, i will provide the question and answers so thank you students for today it's over